Now for congenital heart defects. This is an abnormality in the heart that develops before birth, where one or more problems within the heart structures changes the way blood flows through the heart and out to the body. Now in terms of risk factors, genetics plays a huge role. So family history of heart disease and Down syndrome predisposes a child to congenital heart defects. And even during pregnancy, if the mother has infection like rubella or uses alcohol or drug abuse and even diabetes, all these things are huge risk factors. Now in terms of the types, we're going to break down all the pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, and treatments for all the top tested cardiac defects. But first, let's cover some key points that apply to all of these. As you know, in a normal healthy heart, deoxygenated blood is vacuumed back to the heart via the veins, through the vena cava and into the right side of the heart, then pushed into the lungs to get oxygenated. After that, this oxygenated blood is pushed to the left side of the heart to be pumped out to the body. This is called cardiac output, meaning oxygen-rich blood out to the body. But with these heart problems, less blood is pumped out of the heart, resulting in decreased cardiac output, meaning less oxygen-rich blood out to the body, resulting in big complications like abnormal heart rhythms, murmurs, heart failure, and hypoxia, that low oxygen in the blood. So in terms of complications, the most deadly complications are usually the most tested. So please be sure to write this down. Hypoxia, that low O2. Most common in right to left blood flow problems, like in TOF and TGA. So the memory trick, if it starts with a T, then think trouble. So look at the T's here. T for tetralogy of Fallot, that TOF, T for transposition of the great vessels, TGA. So these are the two most tested, so please be sure to write these down. Now the last two T's, we have truncus arteriosus and also truncus atresia. Now we'll break these down one by one in a moment, but first you must remember that these are priority, since low oxygen is always a priority on the NCLEX, since it's the most deadly here. Now this hypoxia leads to blue babies, as these defects take blood away from the lungs and push it to the left side of the heart. So top signs and symptoms to write down is number one, cyanosis, that blue skin. So Hesse mentions a child's bluish color. The child has cyanosis associated with lack of oxygen. And the next sign and symptom to write down is poor feeding and poor weight gain. From that lack of oxygen, it's harder to breathe during feedings. So Kaplan mentions, the nurse knows a cyanotic congenital heart defect is associated with which symptom? Poor feeding with no or very poor weight gain. The next sign and symptom is clubbing fingers, those thick spoon-shaped fingernails from that low oxygen. So Saunders mentions, an infant with congenital heart disease chronic hypoxia, we're most likely to see clubbing of the fingers. The next sign is dyspnea as well as tachypnea, that difficulty breathing and fast respiratory rate. Now a big sign here is polycythemia. This refers to an increase in number of red blood cells within the body. So huge blood clot risk. So please be sure to write this down. We always report a hemoglobin level over 22. Huge NCLEX tip. Now, this is priority and must be reported to the healthcare provider. So please be sure to write it down. Many students get this wrong. Now, here's why. Due to the hypoxia in the body, the body says, oh, snap, I better make more oxygen carriers. So hemoglobin is produced to compensate for this low oxygen. But instead of perfusing the body, these extra RBCs cause a big old traffic jam within the blood vessels, basically meaning thick, viscous blood that can easily clog tiny little blood vessels and form a deadly blood clot, specifically in those tiny blood vessels within the brain. Now, this blood clot can cause a deadly stroke, a CVA, a cerebral vascular accident. So this is why we must report any hemoglobin over 22. 
Now the priority intervention is hydration. We basically want to dilute the blood and decrease the risk of blood clumping together and forming clots. So Hesse mentions polycythemia, highest priority, maintaining adequate hydration. And question number two here, primary reason for a newborn with congenital heart disease to be kept well hydrated, to reduce the risk of a cerebral vascular accident, the CVA. Fancy words for a brain stroke. Now Kaplan mentions cyanotic congenital heart defect. The nurse understands that chronic hypoxia from this disorder can result in which finding? Polycythemia. Now switching gears to CHF, congestive heart failure. This is most common in left to right heart defects with ASD, VSD, PDA, as well as AVSD and PIMP. I'm just kidding. Okay, these are far less deadly than the right to left problems, as hypoxia is not a primary problem here. So these defects are from holes in the heart septum that push blood from the left side of the heart to the right side, into the lungs, sort of overloading the lungs with too much blood flow. So remember, HF for heart failure, HF for heavy fluid in the body and not in the potty. So the key signs to write down here. Number one is weight gain. Remember, think water gain. Huge NCLEX tip here. Heavy fluid in heart failure. So the number one sign here is pale with cool extremities due to that reduced perfusion in the body. Number two is puffiness around the eyes. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. And also feel free to share the love, share with a classmate and even your instructor. See you guys in the next videos.